Hello, hello, this is Patty Jo. So nice to see you again. Okay, we are still on, I think, day eight. Let's see, yeah, eight. It's been so long since I've done one of these, only a couple of days, but still, I don't even remember where we are. I know we've seen Daniel Ryder, who was the gentleman who kind of blew this whole thing open and made it a lot easier for the police to find him. Got a lot of respect for that guy. Okay. Let's see. Let's just take a peek. This is their break. <laughs> oh, the officers that picked him up. <coughs> I'm sorry. That's gross. I really like how the prosecution is taking us through, like, chronologically i guess there was so many ways they could have done this that they had like a metric ton of evidence but here let's click that one up there Nice and big. Well, he's, re he's looking at one word on his Bible. Let's move it up a little bit. Hold on, I'm getting one. Be seated. You see the respectful Donald Brooks. Doesn't move at all. All right, we are back on the record in State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. Um, I know this morning I mentioned I would uh, mention to the jury about Exhibit 15. As I recall going back in my memory about how that exhibit was um, received, I believe I already told the jury it is received or was received subject to further testimony, so I don't know that I need to tell them again. I got news for you. They don't understand the difference, really. I mean, <coughs> I imagine they do by now understand the difference between published and, you know, asking permission and stuff like that. But they've seen it so many times. Like, would you know the difference? That it's wow. received and would be my inclination to just simply let it be. We've noted it uh, outside the presence of the jury. But that's how I intend to handle that. Okay, I believe all of our Yes, I'm trying to declutter my life. I hate having extra furniture. What do you think about that? But I do have to say, my sister got me this for Christmas. Love this person, Mercury Stardust. Don't want to get political about anything. I know that's a hot topic these days. Love this book. Love this TikTok. It makes me think I can handle stuff. Just... No, no uh, backing or anything from them. Just that was a gift to me. I loved it. I love it. So there you go. Well, they're all back, of course, but um, they're ready to go. And so when we bring them out, um, the state should be prepared to call the next witness. Yeah. Okay, very good. Then bring the jury out, please.
You ain't called that name that you started with. I don't know if the audio's on. Audio's on. And I called the case. I actually didn't specifically refer to you, but I did say State versus Brooks. But in any event, your objection is noted for the record. And we'll continue with testimony. Will you be addressing subject matter jurisdiction? He just really needs attention. Like, attention-seeking behavior much? Is that a judicial determination not to answer, Your Honor? I love how she's ignoring him. <laughs> so is that a tacit agreement? Oh my goodness. Here's my proper list. See, I know I have to clean this off a little bit. To discover all these things. All right. Yeah. Know, why isn't anybody paying attention to me? Subject um, matter jurisdiction has yet to be proven for the oh record. Oh my God, now his act. Scene, scene eight, scene, day eight, scene one. Or I guess this is the middle of the day now. So it's the middle of the day, so yeah, he is, he's a human man. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State have the next witness, please. Thank you. The state calls Officer Rebecca Carpenter. <coughs> Good afternoon, Officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand on my right up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A, Carpenter, C-A-R, P-E-N-T-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Officer, how are you employed? Uh, on the day of the parade, I was working a shift for the Village of Big Bend Police Department, sir. Is that who still employs you? Yes. Anybody else? Yes. I'm also a patrol officer for the town of East Troy, and I'm the assistant chief for the Village of Eagle. Wow. How many years have you spent in law enforcement? I was appointed to the Milwaukee Police Department in March of 1991. And when did you come out here to the Waukesha County jurisdictions that you mentioned? Uh, I retired from the Milwaukee Police Department as a sergeant in November of 2017, and uh, the first department I got into policing again with was the town of East Troy in May of 2018. You already made reference to the parade. Were you working uh, on duty as a law enforcement officer on November 21st of 2021? Yes, sir, I was. Um, overruled. And you may answer. Yes, I was. Were you aware that day that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Actually, I was not. Did you at some point become aware that there was a parade in downtown Waukesha? Objection, leading. Overruled. You yes. may answer. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I did. How did you go about learning that information? Um, I heard over the radio channel that Big Ben monitors, which is not the same radio channel that the parade was on. Um, I heard a broadcast that there had been shots fired. What did you do in response to hearing that broadcast? In response to that particular broadcast, I started paying closer attention. And then what happened? Um, squads on my channel, which is a Waukesha County channel, um, started to 
say that they were placing injured people in the backs of their squads and driving them to the hospital, which is a highly unusual circumstance. What did you okay, I'm going to stop right here because what they're getting into is a little bit of what happens when something significant happens in an area. For the police in this area, this is more uh, small numbers of people. And when I say small, they're not over hundreds of, it's hundreds of thousands in a large area in Wisconsin. So, you know, this town may have 50, this town may have 10, this town, I don't know what the populations are, but when there's something significant that happens, especially when there's a crowd, they'll ask for what's called mutual aid. Now, another example of this would be, and this trickles down, like exponentially. So um, I, I know in the fire department, so let's say several years ago, there was the unrest in Baltimore. And um, I actually wasn't working, um, but I did have students that I was responsible for who were in the city uh, that night and I told them not to go but not everybody got the message quickly enough and I had Students who needed to be evacuated from the city. So that was my Part is I actually went into the city picked up the student and brought them home um, So they were out of that whole Area um, But what would happen with the police fire and other first responding agencies who are working they would actually collect with the command in the area to see how many other resources are needed because it is definitely going to tax the resources of the area. It, just because we do work for the area doesn't mean that's all the... I mean, if everyone got hurt, we would nowhere near be able to accommodate that. We would need mutual aid. So they scan in their area for um, shots fired, something significant going on. They and other officers from other jurisdictions will also respond to the area. It's just called mutual aid and that's all that is. What did you do when you learned that information? I started, uh, I started driving toward downtown Waukesha. Did you get there? I did. What happened then? Uh, initially, I went to the parade route and uh, I talked to a few people around injured people and determined that I wasn't really able to be of help there because they were all back injuries and I can't, in a squad, I can't help with that. So what did you do next? I answered a call on the radio that said there was a man going door to door on Elizabeth Street asking to use people's phones to call an Uber. Did you go to look for that man? I did. Where did you go? Uh, I responded to Elizabeth Street and I parked my squad uh, on Elizabeth and West. Where did you go from there? Uh, I got out and partnered up with two other officers and we decided that we would walk the street and look for this person. Were you wearing a body-worn camera at the time? Yes, sir, I was. Where was that device affixed to your person? Uh, the control box was on my chest and the particular model of body-worn <coughs> camera that I was wearing had uh, a lens that I was wearing affixed to my collar. Your Honor, let the record reflect that the witness has held up her right hand in a circle uh, and pointed it towards uh, about her collarbone, her right collarbone. The record will still reflect. Was that device also equipped with a microphone? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. And that microphone was synced up with the video? Yes, sir. Do you know whether your device was activated as you were walking down Elizabeth Street that, that afternoon? Jay. It was. Overruled, and her answer may stand. May we please display for the witness only exhibit number 80. Go ahead. It will come on the monitor in front of you. Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? 
Yes, I do. We're going to play the first five or ten seconds of that just to see if you recognize it, okay? <coughs> All right, we played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? I do. What is it? It is my body camera video of walking down Elizabeth Street. From November 21st? Objection yes, sir. leading. Um, I will um, overrule it um, and the answer may stand. Does this video and the associated audio accurately reflect what happened that night as you saw it? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, sir. And move exhibit 80 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Rather than see. Um, overruled. Uh, exhibit 80 is received. Permission to publish is granted for the record. While we're in the middle of this, I am so, so sorry. Looks like I got an emergency phone call. Pausing, sorry. Okay, so Please tell the me the total video. length. It is a five minute video. Ooh, five minutes. Thank you, go ahead. We will start at the beginning. We're gonna play it with audio and we will pause at certain points and I'll point out the timestamps when we pause. So we'll start from the beginning, please. <laughs> Paused at 53 seconds. A few moments earlier in the video, we saw what appeared to be a handgun. Does that sound right to you? Yes, sir. Who was the person holding that handgun? That was me. And who were, well, let's see, let me strike that. Um, I want to direct your attention to the top right corner of the screen here. There appears to be some type of timestamp. Do you see that? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection leading. I do. Yes. Do you know if that. <laughs> Is an accurate uh, military time timestamp? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Uh, that, that does not accurately reflect the time but it occurred, no. So it was no. Objection. This is devastating to my case. <laughs> not 11 11 p.m. at the time this video was recording. Objection leading. Oh, sustained us to the form of the question. Oh my God. Do you know approximately what time it was that this video was recorded? I know that I initially began to respond to the scene at about 20 minutes to 5. And I would be guessing about how much time elapsed, but I would say it wasn't more than a half hour or 40 minutes to this point. The person uh, who was depicted in the video at this point, at 53 seconds, uh, that's what, the, describe where in the video you first saw that person. Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. I first saw him uh, standing on the porch. And what, if anything, did you see that person doing when you first saw him? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. He appeared to be rather agitated. Why do you say that? Objection leading. Overruled. It's not leading. You may answer. He was moving back and forth on the porch and gesturing. <coughs> do you recall what you were wearing that evening? Drawing attention to himself. I do. What? Anyone, I'm, I'm sorry, this is, this is really sinister on my part, I think, but anyone with half a brain would have been hiding behind, because that porch had a little like wall thing. It was one of those older craftsman style porches. And, you know, so he could have ducked. No, no, Daryl, 
Daryl in his uh, nobody saw me do anything. Nobody. I had my cloaking device on. <laughs> He's standing there loud and proud, waving his arms and looking agitated, drawing attention to himself as he always does. Ugh. Daryl. Daryl. The exact same set of clothing that I'm wearing today. Including long sleeves? Yes. Direction leading. Overall. <coughs> Did this person, depicted at 53 seconds, um, draw your attention in any way based on what he was wearing? Yes. Why? Uh, it was chilly out, um, lower 40s, upper 30s, and he was in a t-shirt, jogging pants, and no shoes. We can resume playing here at 53 seconds, please. Thank you. Good, right. You got something with your name on it, Matt? No. Good liar. Okay, Lars, cooperate with us. Okay. Okay. We paused at one minute and four seconds. Um, what did we see in that portion of the video? That was a sandwich. Where did that sandwich come from? His, his right pants pocket. The subject on the ground, his? Yes, sir. Okay. Please resume at 104. <laughs> We paused at one minute and 14 seconds. Did you at some point ask the subject depicted in the video at 114 to identify himself by name? Go ahead. I did. What was that person's response? He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. Do you see Mr. Brooks in the courtroom today? I do. Can you point him out for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? He is seated at the defense table wearing a dark colored suit and striped tie and a mask over his face. Just to be thorough, Your Honor, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask momentarily? Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. Now that Mr. Brooks has removed his mask, does that change anything about your testimony today? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, you're leading. You may go ahead and answer. That's Daryl Brooks. Can we please play from 114? What is your name? Paused at one minute and 23 seconds. <clears throat> Sitting on the witness stand today, do you acknowledge that Mr. Brooks has a short haircut? Objection. I don't consent to be called that name. He's leading. Um, sustain this to the form of a question, please. How would you describe Mr. Brooks's haircut today. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Oh. Sir, I understand your objection. Please do not interrupt with that further so that the questioning of the witnesses may continue. You may answer. If you say that name, I'm objecting. If you say that name, I'm objecting. And the jury will disregard the objection if it's solely for the name purposes. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Brooks has his hair cut close today. What about when he took his face mask down? Did you notice his facial hair? Objection leading. Overruled. He does have facial hair. Did you notice anything different about his facial hair <coughs> today versus in the video? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. That is also trimmed closer. Does the hairstyle and the facial hair hairstyle here in court today uh, give you any pause or concern over whether or not it's Mr. Brooks in the video? Objection. Go ahead and answer, please. No, not at all. Let's resume playing at 123. Objection noted for the record. Yes. yes the objection is not the record. Oh, okay. That's what I need to have. We'll mail 1026 to blackmail and register. I said objection. Nobody's paying attention to me. I'll tell you what. Okay. If everything turns out to be on the up and up, life will be good and you'll be on your way, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Suspect, I presume? Unknown. Ask him. Ask him if he knows. He was on the porch here. 
Yeah, I was using his phone. Bell, what's your location? I was using his phone. Because it's both in the WMH room loading her down. I call my friend. Any squads available for a transport? Just give me a lift. That's all. I was just using his phone. Hey, this is Schwartz. I'm leaving WSC. Where do you need me? Can I just sit up? I was sitting Can I please just sit up? Can I please just sit up? He's pretty nice. What's your name, guy? I just told her my name. Do do any of you like watch those other body cam videos and notice that especially when they're intoxicated, and this is something I know from being a paramedic, when people are intoxicated, they they do they respond they were very poor poorly behaved. He is so polite right now. Yes, sir. The snitch is the description of the guy that got called on who was going door to door over here. Yeah, I was trying. Where, I was where trying your shoes, use, man? I was trying to use somebody's phone. Where are your shoes? My flip flops is in his house. No, it's not, liar. Pause dead. Two minutes and forty nine seconds. Uh, did you hear the last thing said by the suspect on the ground at this point? Objection yes. leading. Overruled. What my did he flip say? Flops is in Objection his leading. Overruled. You may answer. He said, "My flip, my flip flops is in his house." Do you know if any flip flops or any other shoes of any kind were ever retrieved from the residence that this was taking place in front of? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. You may answer. I did go in the house and speak Fire. to Ugh. the resident there and asked if he had left shoes or, or outer Ready? garments or, or anything like that, and he said that he had not. Can we please resume at the 249 mark? He was saying he, he just gave me now a jacket. He's identifying soft fat, lighter skin, black male, dreadlock, red shirt, blue jeans, no shoes. Yeah, I did. I did go to that house. I went to that house right there, right down the street, right here. Where are you coming from, man? I was coming from that uh, parade down here. Okay. I know a friend down here. Like so I think that's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Okay, and here he is formulating his. I'm not even going to call them lies anymore. He is formulating his his alteration of reality in his own head thinking that everybody is just going to fall into line with it. And he gets angry at the people who don't, and, and he thinks that people are falling into line with it or continuing, he's going he's gonna to be nice because he wants them to fall into line with his new reality. Everybody march in line. Daryl the leader. <laughs> Everyone who follows me will get their own bridge and collect their own tools. Hello, my village? You don't want me anymore? Village idiot. <laughs> Roll up on your knees. <laughs> Roll over on your knees. Roll up on your knees. Okay, okay. 500 block of Elizabeth. Stand up. Right Five five three five five three Elizabeth. Ah, uh, my. What are you doing? Freaking uh, sweet. Oh. Oh, and here's the start of the pain. Did I do something? Did I do that something? That's what you need to turn. my squad, man. Did okay. I do so something? I, need to stick me no, I didn't no, do anything. No, not at all, sir. Okay, not at all. I don't have anything. Did I do something? Glad to hear it. Nothing like that. How did you get up over here, man? I was coming to see a friend. A friend? Yeah. yeah. Where, where's your friend? I don't know now. I don't know. No, nobody will claim me. <laughs> spin your hand. Spin your back. Back your hand up for me. Nobody will claim me. I had. Yeah, you injured, I went. You injured at all, dude? Yeah. What hurts? When, when they slammed me, my knee. I'm out. I already have an injury. Spread your feet for me. Wow. He instantly started that part of the lie. It was. It was. It just rolled right out like natural. Natural born liar. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. That's my ID. It and certainly is. Me. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, I'm so cold. I'm so cool. Pause that four cool. minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, officer, can you tell us so what you and. I bet those people that you ran over and left there on the ground were cold too. Any other officers were doing in that 
brief portion of the video? Uh, walking him to a squad car so he could be placed inside since he was not dressed for the weather. What happened once you got to the squad car? Um, the officer whose squad he was going to be placed in uh, went through his pockets to make sure he did not have anything that would be dangerous. Okay. And do you know if anything was retrieved from his pockets? Yes. Objection. Overruled. Her answer may stand. There were no weapons, were there? Objection no weapons. B. Overruled. Her answer may stand. What, if anything, do you recall being recovered from his pocket? Um, ID. Uh, some cards, uh, I believe there was a credit card in there, and a car key. Can we please play the from the 430 mark? <laughs> We're having some skipping issues, so let's pause it there and go back to 450, please. I'm sorry, what time is it? Uh, 450. Go ahead. Okay, we're at uh, 448. We'll play from here. Objection. These are technology issues. Let me <laughs> see those last few seconds. Um, we can get them to work, I'm sure, if uh, Mr. Brooks would like to see them. Could we please show for the witness only uh, exhibit number 176? Do you recognize the photograph on the screen in front of you? I do. What does it depict? It is uh, still taken from my body cam footage. Those are my hands, and in my hands are the property that was taken from Mr. Brooks, you can see the officer's back at the open door of the squad and uh, Mr. Brooks' leg in the light there where he's sitting in the squad. Your Honor, I would move Exhibit 176 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection, rather than see. Um, exhibit 176 has received permission to publish as granted. The objection is overruled. And while we're waiting for the screens uh, to activate for the jurors, I'll ask you, Officer Carpenter, do you know what happened to the objects that are in your hands in that exhibit? Yes, I, I gave them to the officer uh, whose car <coughs> uh, Mr. Brooks was sitting in. You don't know the identity of that officer? I don't. There, was, there were a lot of officers from a lot of different jurisdictions. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. That's all I have? All right, thank you. Cross, please. Yes. At one point you stated uh, the suspect was wearing jogging pants. That'd be fair to say? Yes, sir. Were the jogging pants or blue jeans? They were soft pants. They were not blue jeans. Can we show uh, Exhibit 80 again? Yes, we can. Well, yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you f fast forward it a little bit? I'm not going to be sure exactly where the, to pause it at. You fast forward just a little bit.
Can you pause? Can you zoom in a little bit? No, maybe they were jeggings. <laughs> and sake. play a few more seconds. Would that mess the zoom up? Would it still be zoomed in or would it go back out? It'll stay zoomed on oh. that portion of the screen. Okay. She thinks they're jeggings, sir. Pause. We're at uh, five seconds. 55, yeah. You would describe those pants as jogging pants or soft pants, as you say? As you see? Yes. As you see? You stated that when you parked your car, uh, where you parked your squad on Elizabeth and West, you um, hooked up with two other officers? Yes. And those officers had long guns? Yes. Um, can you explain what a long gun is? A uh, shoulder weapon, rifle. Or shotgun. Do you recall if it was a rifle or, or a shotgun? I did not examine either weapon closely. Are you done with this exhibit, sir? Right now, ye, ye, Daryl. <coughs> and you made reference to finding a uh, sandwich, credit cards. Things of that nature in, in the, uh, the pants, correct? I found the sandwich while you were laying on the ground. And you also stated that to ask who is you, you found a credit card and things of that nature. In fact, would it be for the... Daryl, you forgot to ask who is you. She said you, and you didn't ask who is you. And... <laughs> I think we all know Daryl Brooks does not have a credit card. <laughs> Fair to say that that's what was in your hand on Exhibit 176? Do you need the exhibit to answer? Do you recall? There were, I don't, thank you. Um, there were what appeared to be credit cards and ID and a car key. And they were in your hand, correct? They were. So would it, so would it be fair to say you also found those and not just a sandwich? I did not pull that stuff out of your pocket, sir. That was a different officer. I did hold it while he finished searching you, sir. So, I'm sorry to threw me off. So you obtained that, uh, the credit cards and, uh, and all that from a different officer? Yes. Do 
Did you find anything else? On your person? I was not the person searching you. Oh. Aside from uh, the sandwich while you were on the ground. So as far as your search, you, you just found a sandwich? Correct. And at the time, do you recall why the suspect was being detained? Yes. And what, what was the reason? Because you matched a description that was broadcast over the police radio of a suspect involved in the parade incident. In this report, did you write it yourself or uh, did another officer? I wrote it. Do you recall writing that the suspect was being detained for investigative purposes? Yes. Any reason why you wouldn't state what those purposes were in the report? Yes. Because at the time we had contact with you, I was not fully aware of the circumstances. Well, would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you just stated why the suspect was being detained? That I just stated why this, I'm sorry, what was the question exactly, sir? You just, would it be fair to say that you just stated when, when asked why was the suspect being de detained at that moment? You at answered. That moment. He may actually be onto a thread of something here. Because let's just enter the realm of fantasy that we don't know anything about what Daryl just did. It's not criminal to be homeless. Although he was trespassing on other people's property. Um, that probably would have, you know, if he had not done anything else. Let's remember we're in the, we're in time begins when he's found on the porch. It's not criminal to be underdressed. It's not criminal, actually, to lie to police it is, but, you know, maybe he's unaware. Maybe he's got amnesia. Maybe he's, okay, so we don't know. Some of these things don't, I mean, now it ties him to the car, which they found the, his name in and his mother's name in, and they already know this, that they already have witnesses. So we've already tied him to this. But if there was no tying him to anything, some of these things, it's not really criminal to be suspicious. But I think what he's trying to do is separate himself from the complete, not just one mountain, but he's got like the Rocky Mountains of evidence. <laughs> he's got the Rocky and the Appalachian <laughs> as evidence and the Poconos. Are, I mean, he's got, there's mountains of evidence already that he, that they have probable cause to think he's a suspect in something. Yeah, yes. at, at that moment. That, that little thread. Do you, you know right you detain now? detain the suspect. You they stated kind of, they do. because they matched the description of someone involved in the parade. Yes, sir. That's correct. 
but then you stated that at the you just stated that at the time you didn't you weren't fully aware. I knew that people had been hurt. I knew that shots had been fired. I did not know how many people were hurt. I did not know by what mechanism people would be hurt. I did not know the magnitude of the injuries. I just knew that something violent had happened. So it would be fair to say you you weren't in the known of a lot of information at that point. We're in the That's known. That's true. Grounds. Um, overruled. Her answer may stand. Would it be fair to say that you were being heard in Exhibit 80 stating that if everything was on the up and up, you would be on your way? Yes, sir. That's correct. That was me. So would it be fair to say that was an inaccurate statement if the suspect fit the description of something that happened in the parade? A lot of people could fit the description. Not at all. <clears throat> and what do you mean by not at all? I mean, no. No. sometimes people look like someone who did some, something and turn out not to be that person. But that was not the case here. So as far as you knew at the time, it could have been mistaken identity. It yeah. could have been, but it was not. Well, at the time, it'd be fair to say at the time you didn't know. Right. At the time, I did not know. Did you give the suspect any of that information? No. Objection. Grounds. I'm not sure what information he's talking about. Sustain this to the form of the that question. It's vague. Did you give this did you give the suspect any information on why they were being detained? I said actually it wasn't me that said that. It was another officer that said that, and I can't tell you who it was because I don't know. While you were being put in the car, you were informed you were being detained for investigative purposes, which is a stand, uh, an answer that's appropriate for the circumstances. So it would be fair to say that that's not really all that informative? I did not have a lot of information to give you, sir. I keep saying you. Who are you referring to? You, Mr. Finally. Brooks. Daryl Brooks. Huh. Seated at the defense table. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was actually pretty funny. Any reason why you wouldn't tell you a suspect why they're being detained? <laughs> Essentially being that if you take someone into custody, they should know why they're being taken into custody, wouldn't you agree? I can't give you information that I don't have. And I wouldn't want to tell you the wrong thing. That wouldn't be fair. So why would a suspect be detained without any information, to your knowledge? Objection. Grounds and answered. Um, also calls for speculation, vague, sustained as to the form of the question. <coughs> So would it be fair to say that you can detain a suspect without them knowing why they're being detained? Objection. This Grounds. calls for a legal analysis, not factually relevant. No. Sustained us no. to the form of the question.
Ding. <coughs> Ding. Would it be fair to say you initially responded to the 500 block of Elizabeth because of a report of I guess you I guess you would call it a trespassing report I would more put it under the heading of suspicious behavior under the circumstances so is that why you were initially dispatched to that area for suspicious behavior? Yes. I'd want them checking out somebody scoping around my house too. Yes, as a medic, I have picked up people on other people's property most of the time. Most of the time, I knew them. I knew them as regulars, homeless people, people who were intoxicated a lot. Um, I could call them by name. That's how much I knew them. And do you recall when you got the report of shots fired? I believe that was one of the first things I heard over the radio before I was even there. Do you recall ever um, finding out where the shots fired came from? Eventually I did. Do you recall in your reading report <clears throat> writing that when you had uh, uh, arrived at Elizabeth and West and parked your squad and began to walk down the street that you had your firearm in your hand? Of course she did. Yes. And was that because of the call of shots fired? Or did you feel unsafe at the time? That's because there were shots fired and I did not know by whom. <coughs> did you get a report of anyone hit by the shots? At that time, no. I did not know one way or the other if anyone had been hurt. Did you? Had been hit. I knew people were hurt. Did you? Do you recall um, the area of, of where the shots fired? Was that the, the, the general area? The general area? Somewhere in the vicinity of the parade. Is Elizabeth and West in the general area? It's a few blocks away. <coughs> and you did state you didn't find any weapons on the suspect, right? Correct. Did you find any shell casings or? What? No. Do you have any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect? I did not know who had done shooting. I had heard a report of shots fired. I did not know by whom, as I've said, sir. Any reason to believe that the shots came from the suspect is, is what I'm asking. I did not know.
and you stated that upon seeing a suspect on the porch that they were gesturing gesturing yes sir and you also stated that in your written report that it was in the upper 30s that evening with the brisk wind would that be fair to say it was have a point upper cold. 30s lower 40s somewhere right in there it was crazy. like I, I think he almost had a point with detaining somebody in that whole kind of gray area you know but they already have probable cause because they have credible like information that he was connected to the car that was witnessed and i mean there's there's like a fireball following this troll cold i was cold ogre boom boom stomping through town do you think that like maybe monster maybe the <laughs> gesturing was because the suspect was cold grounds calls for speculation um, overruled, she may answer if she's able. I didn't know. Village a big that village didn't want that idiot back in. And do you recall checking the general area around the house that you found a suspect? Yes, sir. Did you find anything around the house? Uh, I guess I'm referring to where you wrote in your report, you checked the likely path of travel. Yes, sir, I do recall that. No, we did not find anything. And do you recall checking the pockets of the coat worn by the suspect? Yes. You mean the coat that came Do from you the recall car? how the suspect obtained the coat? I recall what I was told. So it would be fair to say you weren't sure Where if you were only told this information. Would that be fair to say? Sure. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You, you made reference to saying you, you only know what you were told. So it would be fair to say at that time you didn't know unless you were told. Didn't know what? How the suspect obtained the coat. I asked the resident of the house you were at. Actually, I believe he volunteered to me that he had given you a coat to wear. And you checked the pockets of the coat? Yes. And did you find anything? I did not find anything. At what point did you learn that uh, the suspect who was being detained would be arrested? At some point later.
And it was it was another officer's vehicle that the suspect was placed in, correct? Correct. Did you leave that scene? Not for hours. Why so long? Because uh, when there is a crime scene that potentially spans blocks, everything needs to be searched for evidence. Uh, Witnesses need to be located um, because once things are gone, things are gone. So it has to all be done right the first time. write your report that that evening I believe I wrote it the next morning so it would be fair to say after you had learned a little bit more information then you wrote the report that would be true yes In the video, uh, Exhibit 80, the suspect gave you his name, right? That's correct. Why are you drawing attention to this? You, you've been claiming you're not you all along. What are you doing? Was that right when you handcuffed him, if you recall? Right around that time, yes, sir. Him. You. <sighs> it's exhausting. It's earlier exhausting. He can't even keep up being in the third person. And did you talk to um any other witnesses that, that evening besides uh, the owner of the home that you saw the suspect? No. In the hours that you stayed on Elizabeth, did you talk to any other witnesses at all? No, I, I uh, looked through a few yards and mostly maintained a perimeter for a search. Do you recall why you looked through a, a few yards? Searching for evidence. Do you recall what evidence you may have been searching for at that time? Any evidence. 
You know, a lot of times you don't know until you find it. So do you recall what, maybe you might have been looking for a weapon or anything you like just that? just asked that. That would have gotten my attention, yes, absolutely. Did you find any weapon? No, sir. Did you learn any knowledge of uh, any ring video footage that evening? Probably. I don't recall if I viewed the footage that evening or the following day. I did at some point view that ring footage, yes. So you were, you were aware that night that it was ring footage? I believe I was aware of it that night. I don't believe I watched it, but I, I can't say with certainty. And do you recall initially responding to uh, Clinton Street and Broadway First? Yes, sir. And do you recall why you responded to that location first? To see if I could help anyone. About how long did you stay there before responding to Elizabeth? <coughs> long enough to see. Just could. a few minutes. Ding. further questions. All right, thank you. Any redirect? Uh, referring specifically the to the time that you placed the handcuffs on Mr. Brooks, remember that time frame? Yes, sir. I don't want to say to be called that name. Um, Overruled, you may answer. Thank you. Yes, I do. Do you recall how Mr. Brooks ended up on the ground as that was happening? I do. Could you tell us about that? Jake Shane saw, saw in the video. Overruled. The witness may answer. We instructed him to put his hands up and then to get down on the ground. Did he comply with those instructions? He did. Did you or any other officer have to put hands on Mr. Brooks to get him on the ground? Objection. Speculative. Speculative. Overruled. Overruled. It speculative? The witness they, may answer. You just said they saw it on the video. No, sir, we did not. After he was on the ground, that's when the handcuffs went on? Objection. That's correct. Overruled. She may answer. 
your answer again was? That's correct. At any point after the handcuffs went on, did you or any other officer throw Mr. Brooks to the ground? Objection leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. We did not. How did you treat Mr. Brooks as he moved him from his prone position on the ground to the squad car? Objection. Overruled. Brother the as the video shows, um, he was instructed, let's call it the path of least resistance, to get up off of prone position eventually to his feet with a minimum of discomfort. Did you successfully achieve that objective? Objection, speculative. I'll rephrase. Are you able to answer? Yes. In as best as one can stand a person up when they have their hands handcuffed behind their back, yes. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. Thank you. The state calls Officer Garrett Luling. Good afternoon, officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. If you would please state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. First name is Garrett. Last name is Luling. First name is spelled G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. My last name is spelled L-U-L-I-N-G. Thank you. Go ahead, Attorney Upper, your witness. Thank you, Judge. Uh, good afternoon, Officer Luling. Good afternoon. Sir, I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021. And uh, you were aware of the Waukesha Christmas Parade taking place that afternoon, is that correct, sir? Objection, we Correct, I was working um, on it. Hold on. Um, understand it's leading, there is some leeway when it's just laying foundation, so it's overruled, and the witness may answer, and the answer he provided may stand. Go ahead. Correct, I was assigned to work the Christmas Parade. All right. At some point in time, were you aware of uh, injuries to those involved in the parade, sir? Objection, lead. Yes. Overruled. Make sure you make a line roll on the objection, please. Sorry. And at some point uh, later that evening, were you aware of a suspect being in, taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. All right. I want to direct your attention to that time frame, please. <coughs> did you respond to that area, sir? Yes. Where did you go? I traveled, I was initially parked setting up a perimeter near the area of Southwest Avenue in Wood. Um, when I heard specialist Klein come over the air indicating that there was a subject going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, and then traveled north and to Elizabeth Street, which is right off of Southwest <coughs> Avenue, correction, Northwest <laughs> Avenue at that point. And I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street looking for the subject. What did you see when you arrived in that area? Initially, as I came to the area, I observed an officer from the village of Maguanago, an officer from the Big Bend Police Department, as well as an officer from the, Delphi the city of Delfield Police Department in the area. I traveled westbound spotlighting uh, residents in the general area looking for the subject. Initially, I didn't see anyone, um, so I made it to the end of the street, at which point I began to double back. I briefly stopped and spoke with uh, some civilians in the area just saying, hey, if you see anyone, call the police department, let us know. And as I traveled back eastbound on Elizabeth Street in the 500 block, I observed the three officers from those aforementioned police departments uh, detaining one subject at gunpoint in the front lawn of 553 Elizabeth Street. You had uh, indicated there were people out and about 
C civilians? Yes, there was some people out on their porches or patios. Uh, I had my lights going on my, my squad, so that drew attention for people to kind of look out and call out to me as I was making a Y turn. Do you know about what time of day this was? Uh, not off the top of my head. It was, it was dark out, though. Okay. As in relation to when the incident at the parade occurred to when you're arriving on Elizabeth Street, can you give us a rough time frame? Um, meeting. Overruled. Uh, 45 minutes an hour okay. at the max. Okay. So when you roll up on 553 Elizabeth Street, tell me what you saw. So as I was coming back eastbound, I could see the lights from the other officers illuminating a subject on the ground. Uh, I immediately pulled up, parked my squad, got out and began running uh, to where the officers were. And as I uh, came up to where they were in the front lawn area between the residence and the sidewalk, they were in the midst of handcuffing and detaining a subject on the ground. The subject... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here because... I'm not going to point, I don't think I'm going to point because I don't know security things with officers, but I think we all know this is a badge. I don't know what that is. This is a lapel mic. Okay, so a lapel mic, <coughs> you can affix it to collar, you can affix it to the shirt, you can affix it to any part of your lapel. You can fix, it's got a clip on the back, you can fix it really anywhere on your uniform. He has it fed through this little part of a kind of a collar looking thing and here is this part is the little squiggly or expandable um cord it is probably going around his back and here is his radio this connects to this this is not any kind of fancy like wireless system you are like tied into this thing if you decide to wear it like that i think i wore my lapel mic like that one time for about 10 minutes tops and my partner even said get that thing off you like that that's that's not you're, you're gonna get tied up with your radio okay so this little orange button that's an emergency button you find somebody down who's got there to hit that button because they're gonna find that person or they're going to alert a lot of radios based on that little button there in fact it has to be turned off in a certain way so once you hit that you know the whole of anybody connected to that system is going to hear this. There's another one somewhere in these little buttons here. So my lapel mic, when I was assaulted, did not have an emergency button on the lapel mic. And I will, I will, I will make it clear again, the city saved approximately $8,000 over the, all of us not giving the EMS providers lapel mics with the emergency button. The firemen got it, but the paramedics and the EMTs, we did not get it. So if you were on an ambulance, you did not have uh, an emergency button on the lapel mic. This is part of his system. Um, sometimes the lens is here and, and the other lady said her lens was up here somewhere. But there you go. That is how the lapel mic works on a radio. You can actually unhook it from the radio. It's, it's hooked onto the side with a little like twisty screw and not have it at all and just use the radio. That was being handcuffed and detained on the ground. You see that person in the courtroom here today? I do, yes. Are you able to identify him? Yes. Would you like him to remove his mask in order to do so, sir? Please. Okay. Mr. Brooks, if you please. Thank you. So the subject I saw was Daryl Brooks seated at the defendant's table wearing a dark colored suit with a gray shirt. Now you said he was already on the ground in the process of being handcuffed. Is that correct? Yes. Did you see any officer slam Mr. Brooks to the ground? No. Objection. Hearsay. No. Did you see any use of force directed towards Mr. Brooks by any police officer on the scene at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Hearsay. No. Say. Did you approach Mr. Brooks? She said. Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes. What did you say? I asked him to identify himself. At that time, he said Brooks. I again asked him to identify himself. He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. That's the name he gave you, identifying himself. 
Yes. Objection. Ha! That's not what it says in the video. <coughs> um, overruled. Yes. All right. Did that name have any significance when you heard it, sir? <coughs> yes. Why? I knew prior to responding to that location that Officer Moss, who had initially located the car, had uh, made a cursory check of the vehicle. During that time, he found documentation belonging to a Daryl Brooks. Okay. Mountains of evidence for probable cause there, Daryl. It just wipes that At some point, out. do you recall um, getting Mr. Brooks up off the ground? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled. You may answer. Wait. Yeah. Objection. That, that doesn't support my new theory and reality of being slammed on the ground. D objection. <laughs> yes. Tell us what you remember at that point. Um, off, our Daryl Brooks was picked up off the ground or assisted off the ground. He was then escorted <laughs> to the front of my Mark squad where I searched him. At this point, are you probably the only officer from the city of Waukesha Police Department on the scene? Objection, speculative. Overall, you may answer. Yes, I was the only officer from the city of Waukesha at that time. And the other officers were providing mutual aid to the city of Waukesha Police Department? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Being the squad from the city of Waukesha and the parade occurring in Waukesha, did you take custody of Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. Prior to placing him in your squad, was Mr. Brooks searched? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember about that, sir. So I searched Mr. Brooks during which time I found some cards in his right pocket that had his name on it, as well as a black Ford key. When you say some cards, what can you describe those further, please? Uh, debitor credit cards. All right. I'm going to show for you an item that's been marked as Exhibit 176. It's been previously admitted. I'd uh, ask that it be displayed for the jury again, Your Honor. Oh, permission granted. Objection. You see the photograph on the monitor in front of you, sir? Yes. Uh, do you see yourself in that photograph? Yes. Where are you? I am the officer with is back to the the camera with police written across a fluorescent yellow and orange vest. Do you recall what you were doing at this point in time? Um, at that point, it looks like I'm buckling Daryl Brooks into the back of my squad, or right. placing him into the back of my squad. And you see uh, a set of hands on the right side of the photograph, sir? Objection leading. <laughs> Overruled. Yes. You see the objects that are being held in those hands, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with what you just testified as to the items you removed from Daryl Bo Brooks before placing him in your squad? Objection. Overruled. You said to me and called that name and it's... Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. It's a little blurry, but can you circle for us the uh, key that you indicated you found? With my finger, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Ah, I see it. Because it's a little hard to see, can you describe that key as you recall? Hmm. As I recall, the key was a single key. I don't recall there being any keychain to it. Uh, it was a fob type that had some buttons and it had a Ford emblem on it that indicated that it was a Ford key. Okay. What did you do with these items after you, uh, well, strike that. That's should ask a better question. Did you eventually get these items back from the officer who was holding them? Yes. And what did you do with them? Uh, I took custody of them until they were ultimately turned over to Detectives Stern and Detectives Carpenter. All right. Do you remember Mr. Brooks asking you why he had been detained? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. What yes. Did I answer, sir? Yes. What did I do you mean? remember specifically what he said? I recall that he had questioned why the police were handcuffing him or why the police were detaining him. Did you reply? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him that he was being detained as he matched a description of a subject involved in a crash in the downtown area. Did you say anything about the parade? No. Okay. 
Interesting. Thank you, officer. I don't have any other questions for you. A crash. Oh my God. Here we go. Any cross? Buckle up. Yes. Is go ahead. Thing? Do you recall speaking with uh, Officer Moss that evening? Not distinctly. There might have been some radio traffic between me and him at one point. So it would be fair to say that radio traffic, you guys spoke. So I can't tell you if I had direct contact with him or if I just recall him airing particular pieces of information. I didn't generally listen to a lot of radio traffic because when you're in a jurisdiction where you have thousands of calls coming out, you, you don't want to hear any, any but your own, really. But I would keep it on in between so that I could hear the people around me if they needed help, if they were radioing for assistance, um, if something happened, that is how some of the people found out that I was in trouble. They could hear the screams over the radio. They had their radios on. So j just because you hear things and you can hear things and know exactly what's going on, um, by the way, what verbiage they're using, um, what they're saying, who they're telling, all of those things. So he hears it. He doesn't have to have a discussion with the guy who found your mom's car. Do you recall any particular bit of information that was aired by Officer Moss? You're going to have to be more specific. Do you recall Officer Moss airing that he had spoken with a potential eyewitness who indicated that they had observed numerous suspects run from the vehicle? Objection hearsay. Grounds. Um, overall, the witness may answer. I recall Officer Moss airing that to the officers responding in general that there may have been more than one suspect that had ran from the vehicle. And do you recall if that if that aired information? Wait a second, back that up. Big D. -D. You just stated that there may have been any reason why the air information said it had been, that he had, had spoken to a potential eyewitness? Objection, hearsay, and Grounds. false or speculation as to the words of another person. Grounds. Sustained. Rephrase your question. Do you recall any air information of description? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Objection hearsay. Grounds. You're asking him the description of the suspect leaving the vehicle? Yeah, what, he, what he heard aired. Overruled, you may answer. I recall there being a description of a either a light-skinned black male or po possible Hispanic male wearing a white shirt as well as the potential of a white male with curly brown hair. Do you recall what you did after hearing that air information? Yes. What did you do? I responded to Officer Moss's general location, at which point he requested that a perimeter be set up. So I responded further south to set up a perimeter to Attempts to keep those people within the confines of that perimeter. Do you recall what, uh, what general area that was? You're going to have to be more descriptive to what general area are we talking about here? Uh, the area the area where Officer Moss was. Officer Moss was at 338 Maple. Is that the area that you responded to? Generally, yes. What do you mean by generally? I was driving to the residence when he asked that a perimeter be set up. 
And do you recall where you set that perimeter up? Yes. And where was that? It was loosely around that residence as well as to the south and to the west. Which streets were to the south and to the west? Numerous streets. Well, I'm, I'm referring strictly to your perimeter that you set. Do you recall which street you set your perimeter? I want to say that I was probably the southernmost squad at that time, and I was at Southwest and Wood. I'm sorry, what was the second street? Wood. Thank you. Okay, observation. A lot of the questions from the highlighted stuff that his attorneys gave him before he fired them have to do with police procedure. Okay, so basically they find the, the vehicle that hundreds of witnesses have said was involved. It's crashed, it's, it's not operable, whatever. It, they find um, through clearing it and a once over to make sure that there's nothing dangerous. Daryl's ID that he, you know, so conveniently left to have, you know, complete and clear and convincing evidence of his trots through like the ogre that he is trolling and stomping through this beautiful little town. Um, then what they do basically from what I'm hearing is they set these circular perimeters, you know, so many yards, a half a mile, a mile, you know, and then they start searching methodically through these to find who may have left this vehicle. You know, perhaps it's somebody who's injured, maybe they were injured in the crash, perhaps it's somebody who, you know, just, you know, running away, scared, perhaps it's somebody who, you know, doesn't have shoes on. Knocking on doors looking for an Uber because they don't have a phone because they left it back in the crashed up vehicle where they committed their last, you know, dozen crimes. Ugh, my God. Okay, so his questions, though, would go to hearings that happened well before the trial that say, you can't use this evidence because this evidence doesn't tie to that and there's no probable cause to try. You know, wouldn't those be things that, you know, reasons to have hearings prior to the testimony of evidence like the ones where they say we can't tell them that you know he essayed people or whatever earlier in life and was convicted because it would be prejudicial that would be the time so this really isn't undermining the evidence at this point at all am i wrong I think I'm wrong. Could have said that whole, I know talk a lot, could have said that whole thing while he's dinging his head back and forth. Ding! Ding! Ding. While setting up your uh, perimeter, <laughs> did you receive any more information about the suspects who fled from the vehicle? It was all kind of at the same time. Do you recall being advised that the male black had possibly fled southbound and that the male white had may have fled in the westbound direction? Your Honor, I Jack moved to strike. He's providing statements and facts that are not in evidence. They're based on hearsay. Um, so the question was, did he recall being advised that? That was the question. Does he recall being advised? Still hearsay. Sustained. Thank you. Okay. So who were you advised by? Officer Moss. And do you recall what you were advised? Objection. Hearsay. Browns. Sustain, next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? 
Next question, please. Hearsay. What's that hearsay? Grounds for the sustain. Your Honor. And how did you end up being dispatched to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I heard another officer error that they were listening to Waukesha County Communications indicating that there was a person going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. I'm sorry, you said you stated you heard that? Yes. Wouldn't that be like hearsay? Yeah. Well, if it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted, if it's just explain what he did next, then no. That was the same question I asked before, Your Honor. <coughs> but it's the way you asked it, I guess. Why you need an attorney, dumb dumb Daryl? And upon arriving at Elizabeth Street, you stated that there was already a suspect being detained at the at the moment that you arrived? No. So what did you observe when you got to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I already explained that upon getting there, I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street till it ended, at which point I turned around and came back. So when I initially got there, I didn't see anything. Ah. Did you observe, did you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Not, a, not upon initially getting there, no. Not, not initially, did, did at any time you observe someone being detained at gunpoint? Yes, I already said that. Do you recall what they had on? Yes. You stay for the record and for the jury what they had on? They had a red t-shirts and blue jeans. Blue jeans. They, were they jogging? Jogging pants or blue jeans? Appeared to be blue jeans. Really does not like what that lady called um, his pants, jogging pants at all. And do you recall why the suspect was being detained at that at that time? Yes. And what do you recall about why they were being detained at that time? You were being detained for involvement in a crash in the downtown area. You, Daryl, just you. And upon, <coughs> when the suspect was detained, do you recall, do you recall stating that you were confident they were either the driver or passenger of the vehicle found at 338 Maple? 
No, I never said that. Okay. Did you give a report uh, about what happened that evening? Yes. Did you write it yourself? Yes. So I'm reading from your report right here that you just stated that you wrote. Do you recall saying, I was confident that Brooks was either the driver or passenger of the striking vehicle? That is in my report. However, you asked if I said that. I didn't say that. That's a more or less an internal dialogue with myself saying that I felt confident that you were the suspect, either the driver or the passenger in that vehicle. So it'd be fair to say at the time of your report, you were confident that it was more than one person in the vehicle? No. So why did you write the report in that fashion? I was confident that you were involved with that vehicle and with the crash in the downtown area. So would it be fair to would it be fair to say that you couldn't have wrote you could have written your report in that fashion instead of the fashion that you wrote it? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. As to the form of the question. Any reason why you were referred to a passenger? Yes. Initially, there was reports that multiple people fled from the vehicle, from the area of the vehicle. And because of those reports is why you wrote your report in that fashion, or in the fashion that you wrote it. Objection as an answered, argumentative. Grounds. Sustain this in the form of the question. So when you were, when you observed the suspect being detained at Elizabeth Street, at that time did you know the suspect's name? Yes. No. A lot of people did. And you found a credit or debit card when uh, conducting a search? Yes. Do you, recall, do you recall where you found that credit or debit card? Your right pocket.
in Exhibit 176, where it, where it shows um, someone holding the credit card. Um, was that you? Was what me? Holding the credit card. No. But you are the one that found it. Yes. And what else did you find? A Ford car key, vehicle key. And where did you find that? Your right pant po pants pocket. Play uh, exhibit eighty for the witness. Stay able to do that, please. The entire Can video you, or just a part of it? Um, I'm guessing around the four minute and <coughs> fifty or something, somewhere up in that area. That's the last ten seconds, sir. Is that what you want? Yeah, somewhere up in that area. Take a look at it. Is that where you want it to start? Or farther back? Uh, a little farther back. Thank you, Miss Gussie. How about there? Uh, 436. A little farther back, I'm sorry. Maybe. Yeah, for well, where are we at right now? 409. To the fact that he's going to make a big lie Can you play from here real quick? Thing. Right? You want the sound, I take it? Like, let's watch over and over again how uh, they didn't rough you up. I, I don't really think the sound is necessary. More, yeah. more so the visual. Because it's me claiming okay. to be me. Which goes against all of me. Playing from 415. <laughs> Do you remember this video? No, I don't. I didn't. That's not my body cam video. Pause. Well, go back like two seconds. That's not a thing. Thank you once again. <laughs> is, for doing that. is that this touch screen right? Is this right here? The credit debit cards that you found? I can't tell what that is. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please and thank you. Thank you. Can you go back maybe two more seconds? I think it's a clearer shot. Just for the record, Your Honor, it's not that easy to just jump back two seconds. I mean, if he has a specific time, we can jump I mean, to a time. How would I know if I, if I only seen the, visit, the video once? Like, why is it that big of a deal? You've had... He's had these videos. Right there. How would I know? Right there. He, I'm sorry. He's had these videos. It is part of the evidence that they had to give to him. And he's had tablets and computers and a and a little conference room and, you know, everything. Because he can't be with regular inmates. But, Jesus. It's the first time I think. 435. Now it's on 437. We started it. Pause it at 435. Right, it was started, and then you said pause, and obviously it takes time to do that, so. And the, the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks has drawn a circle around something on the still image. Go ahead, ask your question. The record should reflect on consent to that name. Ask your question, sir. Around the 435 mark, you can see... Um, Whoever's this is is holding 
is holding that uh, credit card, debit card. Is that you? Objection. That assumes a fact not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustain. <coughs> Re rephrase your question. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please. Thank you. You said that you found a key. Where's the footage of you finding a key? I don't have a body cam, so there's not going to be video of my body cam. So if you were wearing your body cam, it would have depicted what you found during your search? No, the city of Oxford did not have body cams during this incident. So it would be fair to say there is no footage of you finding a key? I, grounds. It's argumentative, and he's already said he was not wearing a body camera. Actually, he can't he know said, possibly. It's speculation. He can't know possibly. Actually, he said the city of Waukesha didn't have body cams. He didn't say. Right. It, it sustained. It assumes facts not in evidence and calls for speculation on the part of this witness, and there's also lack of foundation as to this witness. The foundation is this mysterious key he said he found. Um, the jury will disregard that statement made by Mr. Brooks. It's not his time to testify. You will have an opportunity to do that later if you choose. Which he will I'm not consent to be in court that name for the record. Pants. Clerk, you can take that off. At any time that evening, were you able to detain any other suspects? No. After the suspect was detained, do you recall how long you stayed at the scene? Which particular part of the scene? Where you had detained the suspect. At 553 Elizabeth Street? Correct. Off my best estimate, I was probably there for about 25 minutes. And what did you do in those 25 minutes? During those 25 minutes was time detaining you as well as briefly speaking with the homeowner and ultimately turning you back over to detectives. And what did you do from there? From there I went back into a perimeter position. 
would that would that be referring to the uh, perimeter that you were, that you mentioned that you had set? Yes. Uh, around the area of where Officer Moss was located. Yes. And how long did you stay at that uh, perimeter? I'm not 100% positive. Extended period of time. Do you recall why you were dispatched back to that perimeter? At that time, there was a possibility that there may be another party involved. So as the investigation was still ongoing and they're attempting to determine if there was another party involved, the perimeter was maintained so that no one could squeeze out through that perimeter and flee. There's nothing here, Daryl. These questions are completely pointless. They're talking about the redirect so that they can completely decimate what everything he's doing, which is nothing. And do you recall there being ring footage uh, of the Ugh. of the residence of 553 Elizabeth Street? Yes. Did you view those? Uh, did you view the ring footage that evening? No. Did you view the rain footage at all? Yes. Are you aware of what happened to the ring footage? Uh, yeah, I got sold. A copy of the ring footage was emailed to me by the homeowner. And it was ultimately placed on property inventory at the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall if it was multiple videos? It was, yes. Do you recall that about 1640 hours? I don't know, would, would that be 440? Yes, that's 440. Do you recall directing traffic at the intersection of Barstow Street and Corina? Yes. And do you recall Officer Aaron, anything over the radio at that time? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was? Yes. An officer had aired yes, that no question. you had driven around his barricade or into the parade route. <coughs> you. 
you. Do you, who do you refer to as you? You, you Daryl Brooks. And you knew that at that time? Not at that time, no. So how would you say you? Throughout the investigation, it was determined to be you. Do you recall there? Uh, do you recall it being any other air information at that time? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Objection. Calls are hearsay. Grounds. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, sir, or for some other reason? Know what that means. Otherwise, for, it's hearsay. For the truth of the matter, I'm asking him. Does he recall what was aired on his radio? Well, then you're asking him to testify to hearsay, so it's sustained. Do you recall an officer indicating that the vehicle was continuing westbound and possibly blaring his horn? Objection. Grounds? Same objection, Your Honor. He's attempting to testify and offering hearsay statements into the record. I'm not attempting to testify. Um, sustained. <coughs> Grounds for the sustained? For the reasons the state indicated. <laughs> Do you recall? You can ask the witness if he heard any horns at that time. That would be different. Why are you helping him? Ugh. But what someone else may have reported would be hearsay, if it's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the report that he wrote. That doesn't take away that it's hearsay. If it's in the report and someone else said it, it's actually double hearsay. He doesn't know what that means. He Do doesn't you know what it means. hearing about a vehicle blowing his horn? Objection. Well, Same objection, Your Honor. Um, overruled, he asked if this witness heard. That's how I heard the question. I think that's what you were asking. You yeah. mean at the... He said, did you hear about a horn? <coughs> what did oh. you hear, Your Honor? If the question was, did he, this witness hear a horn, then that witness may answer the question. <coughs> did he hear about a horn? That's different. That would be hearsay. So why don't you rephrase your question, sir? Did you hear a horn? No. And, and just so we're clear, I assume when you, when he, that your question meant when he was at Barstow and Karina. Because that's where he was position correct right? that's what you meant yeah is that was that your understanding yes okay very well next question Do you have any other question, questions for yeah. this witness? Yeah. Any reason why it would be in your report that a vehicle was blaring his horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. S assumes facts not in evidence. Yeah. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? No. Have you seen the complaint in this matter? No. You yourself filed a claim in this matter? No. Know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Oh. Overruled. He may answer if he knows. No.
Do you recall whom subpoenaed you to testify here today? The state of Wisconsin via the Washoe County District Attorney's Office. You say state of Wisconsin. Who who would you be referring to when you say state of Wisconsin? The entity that is the state of Wisconsin judicial system. So the state of Wisconsin is an entity to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Is the entity a living, breathing human? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant, argumentative, sustained. Next question. Do you know if the state of Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. We're almost done. An entity is the plaintiff? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Um, <coughs> sustained. It's also overly broad. You ever had a phone conversation? Objection. Irrelevant. Um, with the plaintiff? <laughs> <coughs> About this case? About this case. Overruled. You may answer. No. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this case? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This entire line of questioning is completely irrelevant. Grounds. Um, sustained on relevance. Grounds. Next question, please. <laughs> Someone commented, whoever had the control to the shock device is fired. Seriously. Ugh. No further questions. Thank, thank you. Oh, Any redirects? <coughs> no, nothing else. Thank you, Judge. Ha! All right, thank you. This will be a good thank opportunity to take a mid-afternoon break as well. He did nothing in his question. I'll rise for the jury, please. Nothing. Today, you, know. you can step off. Thank you. We'll be in recess for 15 minutes. Thank you, everyone. Okay, 15 minute recess. Whew, that was long and painful and boring. <laughs> if you want to donate to Waukesha, there's a link you can copy and paste see if it's still active. I think it was still active last time I looked. It was the permanent memorial fund. Um, otherwise, we'll muscle through the rest of this and then I'm sure we'll be getting to more temper tantrums later. See you later. Like, subscribe, and uh, comment. Love the comment.